we looked at two messages, and this is the third one. The first one, anybody know the title of the first message? I guess I didn't preach that well. Seeking <laughs> <laughs> the best for myself. That was That's the right. last sermon. Yep, yep, that, oh, that was good. Sabbath yeah, it's, it's Sabbath school. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody know the title of the sermon? Well, that's the theme for the weekend. Yeah. Huh? It, part of the sermon was as it was in the, the days of Lot. That's right. It was as it was in the days of Lot. What's a Christian to do now? And so we talked about the thing that we can do today as Christians because we're living in this time. And we said the focus, the, well, the main focus should be on our hearts and our lives, helping others find Jesus Christ. And then seeking the best for myself. And we shared, I mean, it was very clear that Lot was one that was seeking the best for himself. And, as, and because he did that, what happened? He lost his own daughters. And we're going to see that he lost his wife because, because of that. Because he was always seeking the best for himself. Remember when Abraham said, so what property would you like to have? And Mr. White tells us that he should have deferred to his uncle Abraham and said, you know, you've been so kind to me. You, you be the first to choose. He took that as an advantage to himself and said, sure, <laughs> let me grab the best for myself. And he kind of stayed with that type of attitude. The Lord still worked with him and saved, and saved him. But in the process, those choices, Mr. White says, were behind him losing and so let's look and so we're looking at remember Lot's wife now Jesus says these he, uh, he tells to remember Lot's wife for a reason everything Jesus said it had a purpose right yeah. so he's talking and you're going to see here in a moment he, he says remember Lot's wife mm -hmm. now when, when you if you're a good student of the Bible and I believe you all are decent students you always want to read what is said before and after a passage of scripture. Or not, you can really get, get twisted in the wrong direction. Uh, right? Because if you can, if the Bible says, Judas hung himself. And somewhere else in the Bible says, go and do likewise. Uh, <laughs> uh, right? And so you can tell somebody, see, you, you need to go take your own life. The Bible says it's okay. Uh, so you have to be careful how you put line upon line. And do you know that that scripture, have, have you ever read that scripture in this context? Line to line, piece of a piece of line upon line, here, there, little, there, there, little. We say that a lot, but we've got to be careful because we're, because we're, mis we're misappropriating the scripture. Read the whole thing. It says here, there, here, little, there, little. Line upon line, piece of a piece of says, and they do it to their own destruction. Read it. And I think that we do that too sometimes, right? <laughs> Here a little, here a little, line by line, piece of precept, and sometimes we do it to our own, our own destruction. So we have to be careful how we put the line of scripture together. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay if I take, took off my tie, right? That's okay with everybody? Yeah, good. Because if it's not okay, just tell me, I'll put it back on. <laughs> and I don't mind. I prefer not to, but sometimes you as you're in the Rome, Rome, you do as the Romans, except you don't keep Sunday. All right. So let's, let's see here he says. Now listen to what Jesus says. Now follow the line of thought before he says, remember Lot's wife. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, so the Pharisees asked Jesus, when would the kingdom of God come? He answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Isn't that deep? They say, so when is it going to come? Because they were looking for what? You know, like a visual sign. He says, the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. Now watch what he says. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is in you. So they ask Jesus, when is the kingdom of God going to come? And Jesus says, look, stop looking all around. God's kingdom should be where? Inside. Not inside of you. Isn't that appropriate for us today? God's kingdom should be what? And that's, that's what we started this series out saying, right? Oftentimes we are looking out there at the signs of the time and say, oh, Jesus is coming and so on and so forth. And we're making outward preparations when we should be making what? Inward, Inward preparations. And that's what Jesus says. He says, the kingdom of God is in you. 
And, it's what, and really, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So it's whatever kingdom that you're building inside of you is the kingdom that you're looking for. Just hope that you're looking for the right kingdom, right? And so that's what Jesus is saying. And they were looking for the wrong kingdom. Now watch what he says. Then he said to the, to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. Or, excuse me. And you will not see it. Yeah, he said. And they will say to you, look here. Or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. Why? Because this is still looking for what? Something on the outside. Because we have to get the kingdom right where? Inside. The inside. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, For as the lightning that flashes out of one part of heaven and shines to the other part of under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. Right? And then he says, and as it was, the days of Noah. Jesus is saying, right, so far, what is he saying? Don't look on the outside. It has to be what's going on in the heart. And then he says it twice. And then he says, as it was in the days of Noah. So it's very, very clear when we read slowly that he was saying in the days of Noah, people's hearts were what? Right. That's what Jesus is saying. Now he says, so it will also be in the day of the Son of Man. Eight, drank, married wives, given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Then he says, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. Eight, drank, brought, saw, planted, built, but on that day, Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So Jesus is saying, they're looking for outward. Their hearts need to be right. Outward, their hearts should be right. Look outward, their hearts should be right. And I'm going to come and their hearts are not going to be ready. That's exactly what Jesus is saying. And then he says what? That day, he who is on the housetop and his goods on the house, let him not come down and take them away. Likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. And then he says what? Lots <laughs> white. Very clearly, he's saying her heart wasn't right. Isn't that something? He, he, he was making it clear. Her heart was in the wrong place. Her heart was in the wrong place. Her heart was in the wrong place. He says, remember Lot's wife? Why? Her heart wasn't in the right place. And that's why he wants us to remember that. Because Jesus wants our hearts to be in the right place. That's right. my Bible. Can I ask a question? Yes. So then when he talks about he that is on the rooftop, let him not go down and get clothes. Yeah. He that is in the field. He's not necessarily talking about physically, but he's talking about once you move out to the country, don't, you know, or spiritually, don't look back at the world. That's, that's right. He's mm -hmm. saying, listen, once you're going in the right direction, your heart has to be right or not you will up. You look back. That's right. Because that's what Lot's wife did, right? Her heart was right and with a seed in a moment. That was true. Oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Listen to listen to the commentary. Remember, and and we talked about this last time. Some of his children come to Sodom, and his wife refused to depart without them. Remember, we talked about that at the last meeting. That the angel came. First, Lot came back and reported to his wife and said, they're not coming. My attempt was a failure, but he had to look at his life and realize it was the choices that he made and caused them to go in the direction that they did. And then his wife, upon hearing that, her children weren't going to make it. What happened? 
his wife, she said, uh-uh, I'm not going without that. And you can understand a mother's heart, right? I mean, you can understand a mother's heart. I mean, those, those are the children that she gave birth to. And she's like, no, this is not going to happen. This is, and she said, I'm, I'm not going to leave without verse 16 of ch chapter 19 once again it says and while he lingered and that's that's lot he, he lingered the men took hold of his hand his wife's hand the hands of his two daughters the lord being merciful to him and they brought him out and set them outside the city and then eventually is when they would say escape for your life remember that Escape for your life. Because this place is going to go down in, in smoke, in fire. I'll read it for you. It says, so it came to pass when they had brought them outside this, that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you. That was the directive from the angel. He said, do not look back. Said, do not look behind you. Nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. And Lot said to them, Please, no, my lords. Indeed, your servant has found favor in your sight. You have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil overtake me and I die. Isn't that something that the angel of the Lord will tell you what direction to go? You say, No, 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 no. That's not the direction to go, because then I might die if I go in that direction. But I still need a lot of work to be done in this life. But God was merciful. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just thinking that, uh, you know, we've been, in the, since we're remembering the days of Lot in his time, uh, there are some close relatives, family members, that would make a decision not to follow, not to, if we are asked to leave the city, for example, yeah, okay. they will remain, it could, be, it could be even be our spouses, our, our children, they may choose not to come with us, you know, so that's, that I think that's really something to ponder because that means that there might become a separation where your, 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 your loved one might say, but I received a couple of these. And yeah, sure. you might have to say, well, you know, as much as you believe and beg, they may choose to not to. Yeah, that's true. I think that's what happened to Lot. I mean, his children and his, his uh, wife, you know, so I'm sure it must have hurt him. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, every human being comes to a point where they have to make their own decisions. Yeah, absolutely. What I'm trying to establish in addition to that is we should do what we need to do now to examine our, heart, our own hearts, to ask ourselves, have, are we doing something? Or have we done something to impede, get in the way of our relatives crossing over to the other side? If not, now is the time before it's too late to go to them and say, look, I realize that some choices I've made have not been good. Please forgive me. I want to see you on the other side. We don't want to do it afterwards and say, man, I could have done something different. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and so I, I totally agree with you. And then in addition to that, I, you know, I don't want to see that. Thank you very much. Listen to what Mrs. White says. If Lot himself had, mani had manifested no hesitancy to obey the angel's warning, but had earnestly fled toward the mountain without one word of pleading or remonstrance, his wife would have made her escape. Mm -hmm. There again, another choice, right? Because he hesitated and said, you know, maybe we should get still making bad choices. And that choice impacted his wife. And that's why she looked back. Did, did, do you see that? It was Lot again. This is deep. He hesitated and she said, well, maybe we should stay back. He was, he's the leader of his home. He's the priest of the home. And as he leads, she, she, she's like, okay. Oh. If he had just said, okay, and went with the angel, she would have said, okay. Yeah. Yeah, brother. Yeah, based on what you're saying there, um, I kind of, I 
generously with his toy. And, uh, it seems as though that Bucks might get, you know, maybe more or less, I would say more to blame than not. And I think Lord had um, a lot to do with his wife's decision. It sure did. Than, um, than she or herself. So my question was, I was wondering, was Lord's wife more deceived than than love? Oh, you know, and, and you know, so. Good question. I was just wondering that because to me, you know, have a lot to do with his wife's decision. Yeah, but she still had a choice, <laughs> right? Yeah. right? No one's gonna have an excuse because God said, "Hey, Mrs. Lot, you made that choice." Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, brother, and then we we'll have to move on. Yeah. yeah, because Lot pitched his tent towards him. towards Sodom. He already had his agenda. Yeah. He did. He, he, he's like the, the people in the church. A lot of people that might be in the church. You want to hear the sights and sounds, but you don't want to go over there. You can have it stuff in your heart. Mm -hmm. You can get rooted in the heart, but you don't want nobody to know that you were like. That's called the mercy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Listen to what she says. The influence of his example would have saved her from the sin that sealed her doom. Mm. Influence our example. And do much to impact those in our home. Yeah. But his hesitancy and delay caused her to lightly regard the divine warning. While her body was on the plane, her heart would come to Sodom. Mm -hmm. And she persisted with it. She yeah. rebelled against God because his judgment involved her possessions and her children in the ruin. Now she's thinking the best for herself, right? Although so greatly favored in being called out of that wicked city, she felt that she was severely dealt with. The God is dealing too severely with because the wealth of it had taken years to accumulate, must, must be left to destruction. Instead of thankfully accepting deliverance, she presumptuously looked back mm. to desire the life of those who had rejected the divine warning. Mm. Her sin showed her to be unworthy of life, for the preservation of which she felt so little bad. It's interesting. Watch this. Remember, you know, I said, we, we can show this in Scripture. We don't need the Spirit of Prophecy. Don't get me wrong. I believe that the Spirit of Prophecy imported our lives as a church and helped to move forward. But watch. The Bible says the same thing. Watch. Right after Jesus said all this, watch what he says. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Ellen Dwight is just making a commentary on it, right? She was seeking right. to save what? Her life. Yes, right. Lot was seeking to save his life, so he lost it. She just expounded on it. Isn't that beautiful? It just shows that she was moved by God, but it also shows that we can use scripture to prove our point. <laughs> because here it is, it says, so then Jesus said, remember Lot's wife? Whoever still seeks to save his life, will lose it. Mm -hmm. Ellen White just expounded on that, isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And whoever loses it, his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed, or one will be taken and the other will be left. Two men will be grinding together, the one will be taken and the one left. Two men will be in the field, the one will be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? And then what did Jesus say? So he said to him, Wherever the body is, there the, ain't, the eagles will be gathered together. This is a very powerful verse. Did you just understand what you read? People use this verse for the secret rapture. They say, One taken, one left behind. And, and the one left behind is, is left for what? have to deal with the tribulation. Here, if you read it very closely, the one taken is taken to destruction. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. He said, where are they taken, Lord? He said, hmm. hmm. And then he tells him, they're taken to what? Death. Wherever the body is, the eagles will be gathered together to do what? Eat to eat the corners. <laughs> very interesting. So, we live in a world of what we said earlier? Distractions. And those distractions are driving our minds in the wrong place. We talked about that at length last week, so I'm not going to go on and on with it. He says, likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built. And, but on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. We said and we proved the point that the people in, in Lot's day have what? An, attest, an attention deficit disorder for the things of God. 
right? Their attention was what? Elsewhere. It was drawn away from the Word of God and from God. And we said that today, the world of technology and these devices are having that impact in our mind that the dopamine level is going up, right? The serotonin level is going down, and our prefrontal cortex, the area of the mind that actually rules how we make decisions for right or wrong is being what? It's actually being dead. And now we have this attention deficit disorder. And some people do have ADD because of all of this. And we have this attention deficit disorder for the things of God. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of some man. Okay? And so, we're told, and I'm going to read this again, it tells us that Lot went, went out to warn his children. He repeated the words of the angels. What up? Get out of thy place. The Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed to them as one that mocked. They laughed at what they called his superstitious fears. His daughters were influenced by their husbands. They were well off. They were, they were, they were well enough off where they were. They could see no evidence of danger. Everything was just as it had been. They had great possessions, and they could not believe it possible that beautiful Sodom would be destroyed. Lot returned sorrowfully to his home and told his wife what of his family. We read this quote earlier. In the book, The Church in Babylon, page 261, the author there says, we have too much noise and not enough quietness in this life. Too many videos and emails, and too much television, internet, media traction. And he, then he encourages us, let us Regularly turn off the noise to contemplate God in private worship and scriptural meditation and memorization. We need to get our minds right back. Bible, uh, we're told that the angel bade uh, Lot to arise and take his wife and the two daughters who were yet in the house and leave the city. A lot delayed. Though daily dis distressed at beholding deeds of violence, at no true conception of the debasing and abominable iniquity practiced in that vow city, he did not realize the terrible necessity for God's judgment to put a check on sin. Some of his children clung to Sodom, and his wife refused to depart without him. The thought of leaving those whom he held dearest on earth seemed more than he could bear. It was too hard to forsake his luxurious home and all the wealth acquired by the labors of his whole life to go forward a destitute one. That's something you say, oh, I'm not going to have anything. He had God. He had everything. Mm -hmm. Stupefied with sorrow, he lingered. He did not want to depart. Loath to depart means he was just like sad and angry. But for the angels of God, they would all perish in the rule of, of Sodom. Mm -hmm. The heavenly messengers took him and his wife daughters by the hand and led them out of the city. We just read that, right? He said, escape for your life. Remember Lot's wife. Now we know what to remember. What are we to remember? Somebody just give me one sentence. What is, what, based on what we've read so, so far, what is it that we have to remember about Lot's wife? Depart with the world. Depart from the world, Ed. Self-centeredness. Self Anything else? Making right choices. Go ahead. It's beautiful. Huh? Stay focused on Christ. Stay focused on Christ. Anyone else? Anyone else? Don't be distracted by the things of this life. Right? Let me share with you a true story. Some of you may have heard this story, and some of you may have not. This is my family. They, they were younger then. I mean, because now my boys are older. You, you, you see my boy, the youngest guy there. Uh, can, can you see him? Oh, okay, that's my life. That's my son, Micah. I used to call him Micah Moo. And I can't call him Micah Moo anymore. He's 14. He said, hey. I'm not the move. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, but he was cute when he was a little kid. I said, "Hey, my, that's my Michael move." And uh, one day we we were at the doctor's office, and the nurse said, "So what's your name?" He said, "Michael move." I said, "No, no." I said, I said, I said, I said, she said, "That's your middle name." I said, "No." I said, "I call him." I said, "Michael, that's not your name." <laughs> uh, but 
He's, Mike is about six feet now. He's 14. That's Joe. Look at little Joe. Joe's no longer. All my boys are told me. My, my, Joe, Josh was told me then, but, and he's still told. And uh, that's us. And we were at Yellowstone National Park, actually. There. And, you know, like I missed those days. That was, uh, I think, I think it was 2014. It was, you know, I missed that. And uh, my, all of my children say, Dad, you know, you need to stop, man. You don't want us to grow up. And I said, Yeah, I mean, I don't. Uh, it's because, you know, as a dad, I, mean, I want to keep protecting them. You know, uh -huh. I, I want to stay over them. Uh, but uh, they're growing up. And this is Joe and Micah. And this is a day that we would do. Uh, there was a, there, there was a uh, construction crew like in front of our house. And Micah and Joe were just excited there. And this was our house. We used to live in this house. You see that house there? It was about a 3,000 square foot home. Uh, and we lived in a small place called Clover, Wisconsin. Population 11,000 people. Next to it was Stevens Point, Wisconsin, 25,000. Uh, we thought it's the place to be. I thought it was the place to be. Uh, my neighbors on this side, that was a doctor. The, the neighbor down the street from me, and you can type this up in Google and say, Who is Noel Group? N O E L. Look at it. And Noel is probably one of the richest men in Wisconsin. Uh, in his house, he has an Olympic sized skating ring in the basement. And so, you know, uh, I was feeling like I arrived. I said, look where I live. You know? uh, even when we first got this house, it was a miracle when I first got this house because when we bought it, some of the members of Stevens Point, they said, where you live? I said, River Bend Road. They said, River Bend Road? You know how long people wait to move in there? How did you get a house there? And I said, Bill to bore me there. And, uh, and then I paid really very little in proportion to the area. I didn't even pay $200,000 for that. Lord bless me when I sold it. See, see, the Lord knew what he was doing. Because I got this house, you know how there was two, there was these wealthy people, they were, they were married. And they had no children, and they would come to the house once a month. He would come from the East Coast, she'd come from the West Coast, and they would spend the weekend together, and then they'd go home. His wife one day said, sell this place. Just, this is just a waste of, of, of time and money to have this place. And just sell it for rock bottom price, get it off our hands. And I showed up. <laughs> Isn't that something? The Lord had me show up, and she said, just give it to them. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And so I was like, I, I, I have arrived <laughs> where I live. You know, and people were like, oh, where do you live? And I, wow, you have money? I said, no, nah, but God has money. <laughs> and so we, we, had a, we, we had a lot of good memories in the house. But there, there goes Joel again and, and Micah. And uh, I'm not a Packer fan. They just made me wear the hat. And that's my daughter, Hannah. That's my daughter, Josh, and that's my son, Joshua, who's doing campus ministry. And so, in 2015, uh, things began. I told you what happened in 2014, right? When I woke up and the Lord said, you know, you need to start preaching the message of righteousness by faith. And he started to say, time is winding down. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, yep, you need to get some things in order. And so my wife said, you know, it's time for us to sell the house and move out to the country. I said, this is a nice spot in the country. There's only 11,000 people. I said, God have us to do our work here. She said, David, we need to remember Lot's wife. Huh? And I said, I said, honey, so she kept pressing me. And so what I did, I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll sell the house for sale by owner. And I put the house in the paper in the miscellaneous section. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping that no one would see that I put my house for sale. <laughs> so, so she asked me, she said, did you put in the paper? I said, yeah. I said, absolutely. I said, it's in the paper. I said, you know, if it sells, it sells. I said, God is in this. And so, I started getting phone calls for the house. You hear me? And I said, where did you see this? <laughs> in the paper, in the miscellaneous section. <laughs> Man. And so people started to come to see my house. And this one gentleman and his wife, they came through. I'll, I'll never forget. First, a few people came. And they were like, no, nah, I'm not sure. And this one gentleman and his wife came. And as he walked to the house, he said, oh, this is my house. This is it. 
He said, this is my dream home. And I was like, you don't know, this is not your dream. It may be your dream, but I'm going to wake you up in a minute. <laughs> and so he sat down, and he wrote out a proposal. And this was a buyer's market, not a seller's market at this time. Remember, 2015. And if you, if you were the, the economy, it was hard to sell a house. And he writes the number down. And I said, uh, this is 15000 less than I than we're asking for. And then my wife was like, she was looking at me like, he needs to just, because remember, I bought the house for what? $200,000. So she was like, just money. <laughs> and so I said, I don't know. I said, uh, I don't know. I said, uh, and, and so the guy said, now watch the words. What is your hesitancy? <laughs> what did Lot do? <laughs> because he didn't want to let it go, remember? As it was in the days of what? And it's paying out of my own life. Do you see that? I mean, do, do you see how we think we're Christian and we're doing that? So no, it can happen to me. And I'm sitting there behaving like Lot. I didn't think about it then, but when I look back, I said, what was I doing? And I said, well, let me tell you why. I said, you're giving me 45 days to move out. I said, I haven't even started looking for a place. I said, if I put my stuff in storage, it's going to cost X amount of dollars. I said, if, if, if I got to stay somewhere, it's going to cost money. I said, I, I, I can't do this. He took the piece of paper back. He said, here's the asking price for your house. 15 more grand. Here. And everybody looked at me. My wife, <laughs> the realtor on his side, because he had because I had to sell by owner. And they looked at me and I said, I said, man, I gotta pray about this. And my wife swift. Boom. <laughs> and I said, and she was like, I said, I said, I just, I just need to pray about this. And the guy said, okay, you know, like we'll give you 48 hours. I said, okay, and when he left, my wife said, what are you doing? <laughs> she said, pray about it. We've been praying, and that's an answer to prayer. She goes, look, they're, they're going to give us what we're asking for, for the house in this market, and you're saying, we've, we, we've got to pray about this? She said, what's the matter with you? <laughs> and I said, honey, look, I'm the head of this house. <laughs> I said, I said, I'm the head of this home. I said, I said, I'm the one that has to provide. I said, if 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 we have to move out, where are we gonna go? I said, I've got to make some decisions to take care of this family. And you know what she says? She goes, You have to understand something. I have never relied on you to take care of <laughs> I have always relied on God. She said, Amen. you have a good night and, and you pray. <laughs> she went upstairs. And I was like, Lord. I said, I'm here alone in this fight. <laughs> so I began to pray. I said, Lord, I am scared. I, I was scared. I said, Lord, if I let this house go, where am I going to go? I said, who's going to provide for us? I said, I've got to find a way to make money, provide. I said, Lord, I don't want to. Lord, how? The Lord began to speak to me. He said, David, you know what your issue is? And I said, what, Lord? He said, pride. Mm -hmm. I said, pride. He said, you love this house. Mm -hmm. You love where you live. And you love the attention it brings you. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, that's not true. <laughs> I tell the Lord, no, 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 Lord. No, it's not that. <laughs> Telling God, and he doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> and then God, so he said, so let the house go. I said, Lord, but if I let it go, and I don't find a place, I said, the money that we make will be gone. So the Lord, see how the Lord dealt with Lot? The Lord dealt with me. So I sit down and I wake up, and, I, and, 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 and so I do the figures. I said, oh, you know what? I could be out of work for three years with what I make. So it's fine. I said, for three years, I'll find something. Mm -hmm. 
Lord's looking at me. He's like, so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to give this up to you. And as I'm wrestling with the Lord, he leaves me with these words. He says, the just shall live by faith. And then he just leaves me. I said, okay, I'll do it. I get up in the morning, my wife and kids, they come down and say, Dad, so what are we going to do? I said, we're going to do it. And, and Joel and Micah, they were like, hallelujah, we're going to go on an adventure. And I was like, oh, Lord, please make this adventure be a good one. So I called the realtor. I said, I'm going to do it. And I told my wife, and she can tell you that on the side, I said, look, if anything happens, we can live three years with the money that we make. We'll be fine. So they gave us 45 days to go out. My son, Joel, who's still good with technology, he finds this camper up in northern Minnesota. He says, Dad, this thing is just top of the line. And we live in this camper for over three months. Are you following me? And while we're living in the camper, I'm looking for a house. I'm like, okay, we gotta find a place. And I'm still employed with the conference, but time is running out. And that's another story. It, 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 you know, like, Lord, I have to work miracle upon miracles. And so I'm looking, saying, okay, thinking, because I'm thinking, right? I'm trying to use logic and not faith. And, and I, you know, like I'm saying, well, if, if, if I find a house within three months, because I won't be employed anymore, I can bring this to the bank, and it looks like I'm making money, and the bank won't know that I'm not going to be employed. <laughs> employed after that. I just, hey, man, I just buy this house. Because remember, if you don't have a job, the bank's not going to give you, right. you know. So, so I said, okay, okay, okay. And so we go up north, get, get this camper. Now watch this. When I go to put the insurance on the camper, the person on the phone goes, how much are you paying for this? And, and then I told him, and he said, give me the VIN number again. And I gave it to him, he said, how much are you paying for? He goes, this camper is worth $35,000. You're paying only $16,000? I said, yeah. I mean, and he said, give me the VIN number. He checked it, he goes, how did you get a sale like that? Now watch, later on, that would play the money that I needed. Watch this, watch how the Lord works. So we drive up, and man, we get the camper, the boys are excited, and we live here for three and a half months, and I'm looking for a house all over Wisconsin. I'm calling, going to places, and come on, come on. My wife steps in again, she goes, guess what? Let me tell you why we can't find a house. She said, because you're so busy looking, you're not praying. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, wait a minute, I said, I'm praying while I'm looking. I said, but we gotta get a place. And she says, just stop looking, and just let the Lord find a place. And I'm going, ooh, that's faith. Because, <laughs> you know, we want to do something. And so I said, okay. So, so I sit down for a week, okay? And I'm praying, I'm praying. And the Lord impresses me to look in Craigslist for a home. I said, Craigslist? <laughs> and I look in Craigslist, and there's the house. And so I describe it to my wife. I said, look at this house. And, my wife, is, she, she's the one, she, she, she's logical, she thinks, into, I'm emotional, I go, ooh, look at this. She's like, calm down, child. <laughs> Slow down. Process, process, think. And I said, look, she said, everybody says their house looks that nice. Do you think they can, they, she, said, she said, David, do you think they can give an advertisement for a house to come and say that is not the greatest thing in the world? He said, thing. I said, yeah, you're right. I said, but man, it sounds so good. So then I call the guy on the phone, he gives me the same description. So we go. Remember, she said to pray. She said to pray. Look at Craigslist. Go to Craigslist. Go to the house. And as soon as we step on the 22 acres and we see the house, my wife says, this is the place. Mm -hmm. I said, really? She goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. We go in and we look at the place. And my wife is swinging on the front porch. She says, David, this is where the Lord wants to be. Mm -hmm. Watch how the Lord works. And I talked to the guy with 22 acres, 11 and a half. Uh, and so I said to him, could you split the property for 11 and a half and 11 and a half so that our ministry can buy part of the property, and then we can buy this property? He says, oh, that's easy. He goes, that's the way the property comes. He goes, these are two parcels of land. Mm -hmm. He goes, he goes, that's the way I bought it years ago. Mm -hmm. and he says, so we're gonna make two transactions. I was like, 
This is not coincidence. So I'm going to make this story sh shorter than it actually is. Uh, we start the transaction, and for three months, it doesn't go. This happened. You know how banking happens. That happened. And so now we're living in a hotel because this campground is shut down. And I'm going, oh, man. And there's another hurdle we have to get Another, And we're still concerned. And we've gotten close to no employment. I'm paying hotel fee for three months. And then the bank drops the bomb. They say, Mr. Guerrero, we got some bad news for you. Now, prior to this announcement, my wife and I, I was afraid to keep putting out money for the house. I said, God, I said, don't put all of it. But while I'm taking a shower, the Lord says, put everything to the ark. He says the same thing to my wife in the bedroom. And on our way to church, he goes, you know what I've been impressed with? All the money we've made, just give it. Because it's, it, it's for the ark that the Lord wants to build in these last days. I go, you know, you're right. The Lord said the same thing this morning. So now the Lord brought me from all the money I had to how much? The Lord was humbling me and said, you know what, I'm going to show you how I do this. And so when the bank called me and said, Mr. Guerrero, you need 16 more thousand dollars in order for this transaction to come. I said, what? I said, why? They said, well, because the banking has changed and the market is changing. And, 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 in, and in order to get that type of home, you need 16 more thousand. I said, I don't have any more money. And he said, I don't know what to tell you. He said, can you borrow it from somebody? I said, borrow 16,000 just from who? I borrowed it from you. $16,000. He said, I don't know what to tell you. By that time in our experience, my faith had grown. It was stronger. What I did was I grabbed the family together. Now we're living where? In a hotel. We grab together, we get out on knees. We say, Father in heaven, this is your ministry. This is your time. And, and these were my words. My wife can tell you, I said, Lord, if this is the time to which you have brought us to, for us to understand that this is the end of the road, then it's okay. And you know why I said that? Because my wife had encouraged me through the process. You know what my wife told me? She said, David, you don't understand. If I have you and the children, we can live in the street as long as we have each other. <clears throat> so that increased my faith. You see what I'm saying? So I said, hey, Lord, is this the end of the road? road and then we're out the street together. At least, as long as we have each other and we have you, we've got everything. Amen. So we said, amen. So we were saying, man, where's this money going to come from? Maybe this is the end of the road. The next day, a lady calls me. Pastor Guerrero, I said, yes, he goes, how's your ministry doing? You know, I remember you folks said you're going to try to find something out in the country. And I said, yeah. And she said, so, did you find anything? I said, yeah. She said, you're going to get it? I said, well, we're not sure. She goes, why? I said, what have to do with the bank? She said, oh, what's going on? I said, no, no. I said, sister, you know, we can't tell you because we don't want to tell anybody. We want the Lord to take care of this. She said, but just tell me what it's about. I said, uh, no, because we want the Lord to take care of this. And then she finally says, just tell me so I know what to pray for. So I said, it has to do with money. And if we don't get a certain amount of money, we won't be able to get the transaction. She goes, well, why don't you tell me how much? I said, no. I said, you understand. I said, I have to tell no man. The Lord is in this, and he's going to take care of this. And she said, just please tell me so that I know how much to pray for. I said, no. And then finally she said, just please. And I said, well, sister. I've got to come up with $16,000. She paused for a moment. She was quiet. She said, where can I meet you tomorrow to write you the check? Mm -hmm. And I said, what? She says, we just came across some money, and the Lord had told me to call you. Mm -hmm. And she said, call Pastor Guerrero and talk to him, because that's where I wanted to place your money. And I said, what? She goes, where do I meet you? So I said, you don't have to do this. She said, I know, but the Lord told me to call. <laughs> and we prayed. I got the phone. I told my wife. She said, what? I said, yeah. I said, I mean, I meet her tomorrow by the church. She has the chat. So I called. We 
um, and so I called her back and then we met and she wrote the check out to me. Went to the guy, you know, I got called the guy at the bank and he said, you got the money? I said, yeah. He said, okay, let's set a closing date. Another closing date. The night before the closing, I get one more call. And it's the owner. Mm. He says, David, uh, have you looked at the title company, the way they wrote the contract? I said, yeah. And really, like I did, but I didn't go through it, you know, fine, uh, fine tooth comb. What, 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 he says, you owe me $2,000. I said, well, now how we were out of everything. And I said, what? He says, sit down. And so, I, so, so we're on the phone and I'm marking it and I'm doing the plus minuses. He says this and he was right. He says, listen, I don't think that you can come to the closing. He goes, we've changed the date and he, and, and he, and he was right. He said, we changed the time and the time and the time and the time. So I said, he said, my wife is tired. She said that she does, she's done with it. She's already moved to North Carolina. We just put the house back on the market. And he said, I don't believe you can close. And, and, and so I said, can you do me a favor? I said, can you maybe sell it for less? I said, can we do some sort of transaction? I said, I know you have some ATVs. Maybe I can buy it or something. He said, absolutely not. He said, I'm going hunting because he was. And he goes, if you have the money, call me. If not, I'm not showing up to closing. Yeah. So I got the phone and then my wife says, David, what's going on? I said, we need $2,000. I said, what? He said, David, we just got $16,000. I said, we're going to have to just trust the Lord. Get on the knees again. He said, Lord, if this is the end of the rope, we just praise your name. Because if anything, we have you, we have each other. I said, we don't know where we're going from here, but, but we know you're directing our lives. Amen. I get up off my knees, and the Lord impressed me. He said, look at your ministry email box. I said, how? He goes, look at your ministry email I open my ministry email, and there's a note from PayPal. I open it, it says, congratulations, such and such has just donated $2,000 <laughs> to your ministry. Come on, Holy Ghost. I told my wife, look at this. She looked, I said, we're going to that closing tomorrow. I signed out, my wife said, turn off your phone. Turn off the internet. She said, don't let anybody else communicate. <laughs> she said, there's only one place we have to go to, and that's tomorrow to the bank. To, to, so that we can go. At the closing, watch what the Lord does. At the closing, that loan officer, before we closed, he came up to me and he said, Mr. Guerrero, congratulations. And this boy tears to my eyes. He said, I knew it was going to happen for you. I said, really? He said, you're a man of prayer. Yeah. He said, I watch you pray every step of the way. He said, and when those, he said, when that last transaction came to 16000 I, I said to myself, this man, God's going to bless him. Amen. Amen. And, and, and then I looked at him, I said, you really thought, they said, oh yeah. He said, oh yeah. He said, God is on your side. Amen. This was a banker. He didn't know me, but he watched what was happening. And he heard my wife and I talk. And he heard us say, well, let's pray. Let's pray. And so when he saw that we were in a dilemma, he said, these people are going to trust in God. And God is going to pull to us. Amen. Amen. And I said, whoa. And so we got the house. That's my daughter. And this is where we live. And my wife's name is Jack. And look what the Lord does. My wife has always wanted to live out in the country. When we finally arrived, we realized the road that we live on. Are you ready for this? Where we live is Jacqueline Lake Lane. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the lake is Jacqueline Lake. God saw my wife's heart and knew what she wanted. And he said, not only will I give it to you, but forevermore, you're going to remember the blessings that I place in your life. Amen. When some people call us and we say, well, oh, they say, what's your address? And we say, 7191 Jacqueline. They say, oh, that was named after you. My wife says, no. She said, that's the name of the road before we got here. Hmm. Now, the story isn't over yet because shortly after we moved in, all oh, about a month or two, lots started to lay out. 
in the new property, the newfound property. He said, ah, we will ride. <laughs> My wife kept saying, David, you know, we're supposed to be doing country living. I said, well, we're living in the country. <laughs> she said, but we're supposed to be pre pre preparing. Remember you said that you were going to do, that we were going to do A, B, C, and plant trees. And I said, oh, don't worry about the trees. I said, you know, God is, and she said, remember that I wanted the Ellen White wave. You know, you got to, I said, oh, man. Ellen <laughs> White wasn't a farmer. <laughs> and so, she just kept saying, Dave, please. So one morning I got up begrudgingly. I said, let me start building digging these holes. The Ellen White way. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's why some, sometimes we, we regret our writings. They tell us what we ought to do is say, don't tell me this anymore. And so I just started digging. And guess what happened? As I started to dig, that's some pretty good big, big rocks. And we have five holes today. And man, as I hit that first rock, I remember going, oh no. And I said, look how big that thing is. Complaining. All right. Digging again. Bing! You know how the shovel hits the rock? Oh no! I said, man, this is going to take a month. This is going to take a long time. Then the Lord said to me, you want to take out those rocks? I can show you how to do it. I said, what? He said, why don't you just pray as you do this? And watch me show you how to take all this out. You'll be done in no time. I said, okay. You know what I did? I prayed. I said, Lord. And he said, just hit here. The rocks started coming out easily. And within no time, you know what happened? I got all the rocks out of each hole. I mean, a short period of time. Then, as I was done, I looked up, and guess what? There was an eagle soaring over my home. The Lord said, you shall soar with eagle wings if you just trust in me. And the Lord said, I've given you this lesson today, David, because you need a new heart. You know those stones in your heart? He said, I'm the only one that can take them out. He said, why don't you just yield to me and surrender totally, totally to me and just trust him. You know that's what the Bible says? A new heart also will I give you. And a new what? Spirit. Spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. God said, I'm working on your heart. And trust in the Lord, what will happen? They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with evil winds as evil, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk, and they shall not faith. You see, the Lord wants us to be born again. That was born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And did I need faith? Yes. The Lord gave me that faith, that experience. He who, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And that night, that afternoon, as I laid in the couch and thinking about where we had moved and what, and what was going on, the Lord gave me this message. He said, I'm bringing you to where I brought you to save your house. He said, this ministry is not all about going throughout the world, but about saving those in your home. And this is what it says, by faith, no one when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to, this, to save what? In his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. What are we told? Every act of life, however small, has its bearing for what? Good. Evil or good. Remember what we're told? It is the unpretending acts of daily self-denial performed with a cheerful, willing heart that God smiles upon. We're not to live for ourselves, but for who? And it is only by self-forgetfulness, by cherishing a loving, helpful spirit, that we can make 
our life a lesson. For as it was, in the days of life, they ate, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built. And on that day, the lot went out of Sodom and rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed and so will it be in the day the Son of Man is revealed. And Jesus said, remember, lots why? Let's remember. Let's remember what happened in Lot's life. Let's remember Lot's wife and what caused her to look back. So all these things has happened, the Bible says, for our example. For but to whom the end of the world has come. And God had to bring me to that experience to help me to see that I had a heart like Lot. That he wanted to cleanse that heart and change that heart and convert that heart so I could be more like Jesus. Is that the end of my experience in life? No. Even today, pray for me. I'm still going through stuff today. When I get to heaven, and, and I know some of you are going to think it's funny, I believe the Lord's going to get to come up to me and say, man, you are hard at it. He said, man, you didn't get the lesson. Though. He said, but I, but I know you're going to say, but I loved you. And I still love you. And I worked through this with you. And, and I'm going to say, praise God, I'm here. And that's why. We're told that we're going to take that crown and say, Jesus, you, you deserve this. I don't deserve this. Because it was up to me, Lord, man, I would have missed out on eternity. But Jesus works with us. He's patient. He's long suffering. He wants to save us. And at this point in earth's history, you know what he's trying to say to each one of us in this room? Like the angel, he's trying to grab our hand and say, get out. Escape for your life. Many of us are doing what? I know that now. Or I'm too busy working. I'm too busy being busy. I'm too busy on the internet. I'm too busy in a relationship. I'm too busy with college. I'm too busy focusing, making the look seeking for the best for myself. And God is saying, escape for your life. And for some of us, like he's done to me, he, the Lord is dragging. He's like, come on, let's go, brother. I have to wake up. My wife reminds me. My children remind me. I mean, whew. You know, I have a daughter who's special, and I, and I got a familiar. My wife said, you know, the only one that, get, that, that can get to you sometimes is your daughter. And it's because... I don't know why I let her do it, but she just, I'll give you an example, like the other day. My, uh, my wife was trying to tell me, David, be calm. David, oh no, David, this is the way you do it. And I'm like, come on, honey, stop. My daughter comes up to me, and, and I don't know why I listen to her, maybe because we're pretty much the same. She looks at me and says, Daddy, let me imitate you, okay? I go, okay, this is you. Ah, uh, uh. I said, that's me? She said, yeah, I said, man, I'm gonna stop doing that. My wife said, it took her to do that. I said, I don't know. She knows how to, she knows how to connect with me. And let me, I said, because if I look that foolish, I said, I need to change. Isn't that something? I said, huh, that's the way I look. She said, oh yeah. She said, you can see yourself. You're like, uh. She showed up. I said, what's the matter with him? And, and, and I stopped what I stopped doing that day. My wife said, that's what it took. She said, I try to talk sense to you, you know, listen, and she does all this crazy stuff, and you say, okay, I got it. She's speaking my language. But thank God for those moments, you see what I'm saying? Those moments where, he, where God can use my daughter, my son, whoever it is, to get my attention and say, you know what, buddy? That needs to change. And I held my daughter and I, and I hugged her. I said, I'm going to thank you. I said, please forgive me. She said, oh, no, it's, it's okay, Dad. Now forgive me. 
<laughs> he said, but that's gonna change. <laughs> God will bring people into our lives, right? That's right. That's right. Yes. How foolish it may seem at time to, to give us a message to get our attention, because he loves us. And for that, I say, for the Lord. Thank you for this, this day together. I've been blessed. Pray for me that I'm going to my own thing right now. I am. I mean, the Lord's got us, but like a lot, I'm thinking about, hmm, I should have made that decision. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be open with you. I'm because I'm your brother in Christ. Pray for me. Yes, one, one thing that I've done wrong in my life, and it brings tears, I should have never brought the internet to my house. But I did. But I'm paying for it now. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I would have to get rid of that thing. I keep making excuses to my wife, but we got ministry. I said, we're out in the country. And uh, how, how am I going to do my Zoom calls? Said, you better Zoom downtown. <laughs> and find an office space, brother. But get that thing out of here. I said, well, I got to drive 30 minutes, honey. Got it down. Want to lose your house over this thing? Pray for me. Because I've got to sit down with my children. Or now, they're not addicted, but have that drawn to it and say, Dad, what do you mean we're not going to have this access? I've got to think about eternity. Because I've known and I've studied the things that I showed, she shared with you this afternoon. Uh, yeah, this morning to the service, what it does to our brains. I've got to do something. To save myself. My house. Pray for me. We don't see each other this side of heaven. I say time runs out before we see each other again, because I think time is just, things are unfolding quick. My prayer is that we see each other in eternity. Amen. No technology, no internet, no smartphone, no Facebook, no Instagram. No tweeting. <coughs> we'll start here now. Let's not live for pleasure. Let's look. Let's live to be content. Amen. Right? Paul said, "I learned to be content." And let's ask God to help us as we await the story time. What do you say? Amen. Why don't we stand up? Why don't we close in prayer? Thank you for allowing me to. And this this day with you. You guys are special people. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this.